Hello, uh, welcome back to another video tutorial for React Hook Form. My name is Bill. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how controller component actually works uh, and also talk about the native motivation behind. And lastly, we're actually going to build a power controller that, on top of existing controllers capability. So first thing first, let's talk about uh, the motivation and the reason why such component actually exists. As you guys were already probably familiar with uh, React Hook Form, that we can just register the ref and all the subscription in terms of the input values and validation, or can just get taken care of within the custom hook. However, that's not always the case when you're actually using with external controlled component, uh, things like Undesign, Material UI, uh, React Select. I can name a bunch of them. The rationale behind is because uh, most of them don't actually expose their input ref or forwarding their ref. It's a bit of shame, but eventually I think more component probably will uh, exposing that input ref in the near future. Now you probably be lucky if you're actually working internally that you have a design system that actually uh, in your own control that you can actually expose ref or forwarding ref then things would be probably a lot easier for you. But there are cases that people, a lot of people are actually using a popular library externally. And that's the reason why we actually designed to build a controller. And the controller, we're actually isolating the re-render within that particular controller and also taking care of the registration or the setting values or the validation all in once. So, uh, let's have a look at the API uh, to understand and get familiar with the controller. Um, a controller is probably the most complicated components inside hook form, uh, and yet it doesn't actually have a lot of props. So let me just uh, focus on two important props in here that you're probably going to have to understand well before you can, you can actually pick up a controller. Now that is render and the S. S was introduced on version 5 and if you're on version 6 then you will be exposed to render props. Um, so let's talk about S first. So S is basically getting the external control component and injecting props into them and hence uh, allows us to collecting the data to the validation and specific props that get inj inject are on change, on blur, and value. Now this is uh, working for most of the cases. If the external component actually um, name the props as uh, standard, which is these three. However, if you're working on checked box, and this will actually become checked, uh, and this is just the time when you actually probably have to consider using render. With render props, uh, you give uh, a lot more flexibility because we show you what are the props that you should be wiring up and it's your kind of responsibility to hooking up all those individual props in order to make controller works. So in this example with checkbox, we assigned on change and because now that is no longer either target or value, we want to know whether it's been checked, so we're passing either target or checked. For the value part, because it's no longer value, we're actually using checked, and then we assigned value into the checked. The rest of them stay the same for on blur and name. Now, you probably would encounter similar issues like uh, in React Native, uh, on change probably would be called on text change. So it's important for you to know uh, what are the props actually doing in your component and wire them up accordingly. If you understand the fundamental and the, the idea behind, I think you should be fine with the controller. Now, without further ado, let's actually go into live coding and just quickly show you how to actually wrap a, a native input with controller without actually exposing the ref of that particular uh, input. 
Now I have this cosine box already set up. Uh, so basically install React Hook for obviously, and that's all you need. And the rest of it, uh, what I had was obviously yeah, calling the user form custom hook. And I also prepared the form provider, which it's going to be useful later on when we actually build the, the last part of power controller when we actually want the extending existing functionality of controller cool so let's continue with controller so let's getting all the props ready so we're gonna need control which is method of control we want to give it a name uh, let's say first name and we want to give it a default value and obviously we want to actually render the templates in this example we're going to start using s to start with and let's actually declare the type as well so we will know, we know that in this form we actually have first name which has string cool now everything should work we already started collecting data from the form beautiful so now next let's convert this into render so we know what's actually happening behind the scenes so what we have here we have value on change on blur and name so let's passing down these props now you can assign them individually i'm just being a bit lazy in here and that should work as well fantastic uh, now that we got controller working so the next part it's going to be a little bit more advanced we're going to touch a little bit about TypeScript we're going to learn how to actually extending existing controller component uh, by adding functionality like check it whether it's dirty check whether the form is actually being touched uh, check if uh, if time allowed with let's do a warning functionality as well so warning is basically um, different with arrows arrows would actually stop the form from submitting warnings is more like a, a great ux uh, on top of your form to give your customer knowing okay your data actually looks fine but there are some you know little tiny issues in there for you to actually enhance it obviously uh i mean some of the some of you guys probably would argue okay why don't you just build in those existing uh those functionality into controller uh now it is very easy to introduce this functionality into the controller and making the api surface area a lot bigger but at the same time you know um the more you write the more i write the more uh, the bundle size is going to be for the library not everyone is going to be using that and i still loved um how primitive and uh simple that we have hooked from API is and allowed the user to actually compose uh, different API to, to make uh, components or, or hooks more powerful anyway let's dive into uh, the, the power controller so we're going to taking some of the props we're going to define the props in a second nice and we want to return the control inside it will be a more like a wrapper so we want to spread all the props now at this time uh, if we replace this that should work for us although we haven't set up the, the type correctly now that, that that functionality is actually working correctly because we we just passing down everything uh, and and that's working magically which is good so let's define props so we we at least don't see those ugly error message so let's using controller props and then we give it an input as a generic and all the error goes away that's good now now, now is the time that we actually want to including more functionality and that's when the use form context becomes handy because now we can actually get in the form state out of the use context and we can read things like you know it's dirty let's say false to first to start with it's touched and 
obviously we can reading that value from the form state and we passing the other name of that uh, the import and then we do the same for the touched and if we actually log those value onto the console that should they should have worked so if I so they started with all files if I unfocus the input is touch become true and then when I change the value inside uh, is dirty become true so okay so the next challenging is how can we actually passing all these stuff into here so we can actually use to render them correctly so the trick part is actually uh, we injecting more uh, arguments into the render so things like this dirty is touched and uh, we're going to do a warning as well and inside of my head uh, the warning will be uh, will be more like you know a callback that you know uh, let's just let's just give an example in the AI right? if the value is more than 10 characters and then we want to actually print out some message this is too long and we want what, what we want to have is actually rendering out the message uh, inside the render props. Oops. I hope you follow. Uh, you guys actually follow me with me. So what we want to have, right? We want to show uh, is dirty, and then we write a message to the. So the UI say, okay, this form is dirty. Actually, let's give it a p-tag so it looks nicer. And we want to check it's touched as well. And the last thing, we actually want to actually render our warning. So that's the kind of intentional behavior, right? Of course, right now it's not going to work because we haven't actually wired up anything just yet. Uh, but that's that's the kind of behavior or features that we wanted this power controller to have. Render out is dirty, is touched, warning message. All right, now it's time to get some action happening in here. Obviously, we want to do something with the render method, uh, which normally we would return props the render and then invoke, and then pass down all the inner props in here. Uh, oops. Cool. Let's see if I actually break anything. So the form's still working as it is, but the thing is that we actually require a lot more props. So let's actually define the new props with the type first. So obviously we want to omit the existing functionality of render, and we want to. We want to do, uh, want to override that random props. And here's what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna assign a new method, uh, and what is what is X gonna return? That's right, React element. And the new args is gonna be uh, actually let me cheat a little bit. All of that, which is existing functionality, uh, on change, on blur, name and value. We want to have is touched is dirty and also warning. What are we gonna have to warning? That's gonna be a string. And we want to have a new props which is called ward. It's gonna be returning boolean or string. Cool. Now let's wild this up. Obviously, we want to passing down all the existing functionality, and we want to wire up. Is dirty? Is it 
touched. And the last one is gonna be warning. So let's just cheat for now and return empty string. Have a look. Uh, why is still screening for arrows? What's missing in here? Unchange on below values, touch is dirty warning. Type input and defined. And right. We actually don't want to pass S. So it's better to actually do this. Ops. Control. Name equal props dot name. And voila. There it goes away. Beautiful. So let's see if that actually does anything. Ooh, that's already working. How good is that? Just by like that, we actually extending. Oh, sorry. There's something default value. You see, it's 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 not. It's actually quite easy actually to introduce more feature on top of controller because uh, we we just did it. Having two new props coming down. Touch. It's dirty. Now it's touched. Cool. So the last last missing piece is actually uh, the warning message. So we can easily do that. Actually, uh, we can just assign prop store warn and then passing down the value, uh, which is oh, sorry, in the props the value. Right, that's gonna work. Okay. It can be a boolean, right? That's fine. Now the arrows goes away. Let's try this out. If I having more than ten, voila! The warning is working as well. Cool. I'm happy with that. Nice. I'm happy with that totally. So. I think I'm gonna wrap up this video. Uh, it's probably already quite long. Uh, so in this video, let me quickly wrap this up. I, I did a talk about the rational and the idea behind the controller. I did a, a quick um, um, code example with controller, and we also are building on top of its ex existing controller's functionality by invoking, by including like it's dirty, it's touched, and even the warning message. I mean, you can even do a lot more. You can do things like, okay, it's dirty. Uh, it's just a lot of more logic that you can actually write into this little power controller by basically extending the, the functionality of controller. So I hope you find that useful and uh, learn quite a new things about React form. So also feel free to, to leave uh, you know questions and comments. We have Discord channel. We also have GitHub uh, discussion. So there's, there's a lot of place that you can get in touch with me or of people that are into the team so thank you for watching and uh, i hope to see you next time see you bye